Yeah, not, not in three days. Well, what have you looked at the new duck hole? Oh yeah, I looked at it. It looks good. It's as it's as pretty as a fine woman combing, combing your hair, hair on the end of your bed. <laughs> <laughs> That's the trick to it, boy. Wait. Hello, folks. I'm Daniel Boone, and I'm going to make America great again. What's <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> he went through about three American icons. That's it, really boy. Quick. Hey. <laughs> Can we start over that first part again? Oh, man. As pretty as a what? As pretty as a woman combing her hair. Sitting on the end of your bed. Yeah. <laughs> okay, That's if she's sitting on is, somebody huh? else's bed, it don't mean nothing. But if she's sitting on the end of your bed combing her beautiful hair. It means you're married. Then, hey, you got something going on in. <laughs> That's what the duck hole looks like? You, you reckon Christine's ever looked at the end of her bed and watched you combing your hair and thought the no. same thing? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'd like, I'd like to know, know the lady. last time he run a comb through his hair. <laughs> hey, I've run a comb through my hair every morning, son. Oh, do you? Yeah, but it ain't on the end of the bed. It's in the kitchen. That's where my comb's at. Oh, oh good. <laughs> hey, I'm serious. Very, very sanitary. Hey. <laughs> you keep your comb in the kitchen? I keep it. Well, I keep it on the bar. Oh, so anybody oh, yeah. can use it. Well, hey, it's just there. Yeah. <laughs> That's where it's handy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, we'll I'm see y'all next week. <laughs> right, that's um, it, boy. That's it for this podcast. Uh, my, my, Daniel Boone. What? Look, hey. Huh? That's what we grew up on, okay, was catching coons, mink, beaver. You know, we run a trap line for crying out loud when we was kids. That's how we grew up, boys. That's what made America great. Okay, okay? that's fine. That's why they settled the West. Why the okay. hat? Why the hat? It's yeah. not cold outside. Cause hey, we just uh, Philip showed me a picture of it, and I said, "Hey, order me four of them." Okay. I bought one for me, Philip, and then for the pipeline people, Miss Randy, uh, Mister Randy Byer, and his lovely wife Sharon. Okay. <laughs> and we had them on. So you're reinvesting in the pipeline. Yeah, people. I can oh, yeah, appreciate yeah. that. Oh, well, hey, you know, <laughs> that's good. Uh, they're good friends. Okay, so I bought them a Daniel Boone hat. The only coon thing. Coonskin cap. I got to get in the inner circle that gets in on the coonskin. No, coon you ain't getting in the inner circle. I want you in the hat that, circle. <laughs> the, only, the only thing that mildly disturbs me is I didn't realize. Oh, it just mildly disturbed you? Well, I, it, myself, that I haven't made this observation, it's just how close the color of your hair is to a raccoon. <laughs> well, hey, there, like, there, there, there you go. Raccoon. You okay. cannot hey, tell look, the, hey, the look, ponytail look, from the coon That's the tail. raccoon. And that that's what a little bit I got. Okay. I mean, it's unbelievable. Ponytail. Like, you have got to wear that hat duck hunting this year. Oh, I am. Every, I am. every day. I'm going to wear it when I go deer hunting. Oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe it'll help me out with my aim since I shot eight foot over that doe the other day. I mean, you kind of look like Vlad Vladimir, the Russian poker player that retired from the KGB or something. Speaking of that, hey, what? I just won second place over there in Houston. What did it pay? It paid uh, two beautiful necklaces for my beautiful redheaded woman. So no cash? <laughs> no cash. But no she cash. got she got two nice necklaces. One of them was the, uh, had a... Uh, <clears throat> I can't even think of it. It's green. Emerald? Yeah, emerald. Real pretty emerald deal hanging on the end of it. There you go. But it was beautiful, and she enjoyed it. It was a charity tournament, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was charity poker poker tournament, 100 people in it, okay? And then uh, also the golf. Yeah. How'd you they play the, golf? How'd you fare oh, in the I golf didn't, No, I didn't, I didn't play golf. Oh. Didn't play but golf. I did give up the, all out there on the uh, golf course. They got a about a five and a half six hour uh, free concert from you. For me, yeah. Did you give them any tips on a putting green like that time nah, you made that I, golf nah, video? No, nah, I was screaming while they were swinging and everything else. <laughs> I was there to harass them and have a good time. Uh, and you did it, didn't you? <laughs> and I did it. That's exactly right. So oh. everyone that concerned had a blast. Well, good. Yep, and raised a lot of money for the kids. That's what it was about. That's all. Awesome. Matter of fact. That bear sitting right there is be an angel. Okay. And uh, that whole thing was for the kids. Oh, is that what it was? The Be, yeah. be an Angel Foundation? Yep. That's yep. cool. That's one of them. Okay, one of the deal. That's cool. But uh, Pastor Rennie, he's in a lot of that stuff. Okay. 
Because oh, he was the Houston Oilers quarterback for quite a while. Really? Yeah. Wait, who? What was his name? Uh, Dan Pastorini. I didn't keep up with the Oilers. Yeah. That, that was They went to Nashville, what, in 99 or something, I guess? Oh, the only thing I remember about the Oilers, wasn't it Warren Moon Warren was their Moon. quarterback? Warren yeah. Moon. Uh, Earl Campbell. Dan Earl Pas- Campbell was running back. Yep. Bum Phillips. Yep. Dan Pastorini was the third pick he was of actually the 1971 there. draft. Well, are you met? Yeah. You, Bum oh, yeah. Matter of fact, he was sitting at the table that we that I played. I don't think Bum Phillips is, is alive. I think well, his son is. His son, Wade, yeah. Wade oh, Phillips. Okay. Well, it's his oh, son. Oh, Wade Phillips is hilarious. Yeah. Well, no, no. He was one. Okay. When you said Phillips, I, I yeah. just. Son yeah. of Bum. Yeah. Okay. That's what it was. Okay. I never yeah, get Dan all that. Dan Pastorini right. played 13 seasons in the NFL yeah. and won a Super Bowl. Really? Oh, yeah. You were hanging. Oh, you, oh you're no. big time. No, no. Hey, he was legit now. Don't get run. You know, I had a man could play quarterback. <laughs> but it was a real good event. <laughs> Pack okay. off of him. Raised a lot of money for the children, okay, which that's what was it about. You know, so it was a good – all the way around. Good out opportunity. Well, look, hey, we're glad to have you back. Hey, well, I'm glad we did back. miss you. We had Willie take your place. Well, no, no, because hey, I, well, how did that go? It well, was great. Well, I quit. Okay. We got some news for you. I quit what? my job because Willie sat by me for that one. Uh-oh. Johnny D's gone. See He's ya. Gone. Well, hey, well, I got one question. What are you going to do now? I'm going to go sell fishing bait, but I'm still going to sit oh. by you. Okay. I'm well, going to okay. keep well, going to sell some crickets. Uh, Selling yeah, crickets, going to go baby. sell crickets. Yeah. I go down there and visit them once. They, they did have you. the greatest sign of all times at, at I've ever seen at a bait shop. What About uh, those minnows? Uh, our crickets catch fish or die trying. That's it. <laughs> That's what we do, people. <laughs> I, I, I like the attitude. Yeah, yeah. Go, go, team, go. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we do over there at the old yeah. honey. I was there this morning just – Filling up. You well, know, you soft can find plastics. out a lot of good information at the Honey Hole. You really okay? can. Because the man going. that uh, runs it, he actually goes out and fishes, so he can give you some good advice. He used to. Now he oh, don't he have no time to, to fish, oh, which he, is why I'm going back time. to let well, him there go, you go. Fish hey, If the business has right. got so good that you have to hire help, yep. Okay. People are secretive about their fishing spots. Oh, you can't tell nobody. I've yeah. known one man who was telling everybody where it was. Ken Bunn. Yeah. Had no problem telling anybody. He was like, "No, this is where they caught him." Well, let me tell you. Let me tell you how about my three brother, weeks after. That's right. All right. Let me <laughs> tell you how my brother operates yeah. on that. Tell us. He took Terry Bradshaw fishing with him one time on Darbone, and the first thing he did when he blindfolded got blindfolded, tell me, "Hey, here you go. Put this blindfold on." No, he didn't. Yes, he did. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, no. He made him put it on. Look, I was and at Bradshaw said, "Hold it. You're joking, right?" And uh-uh. Phil said, "No, son. I'm not joking." If you want to go fishing with me, put the blindfold on. Well, hey, they go up there and they fill the cooler up, bass. Okay. And then <laughs> Phil got cranked the motor. And he sat there for a minute with, with an island. He said, what are you doing, Bradshaw? And Bradshaw said, what are you talking about? I'm ready. He said, no, you ain't. Put the blindfold on, <laughs> son. <laughs> you know, they had a, they had a, uh, they inducted <laughs> Phil into the Louisiana Tech Hall, Hall of Fame, of fame. Uh-huh. a yeah. few years ago. I went to that game <laughs> with him. Bradshaw was I there. It. I love it. And they talked for two hours, About. two hours before that game. And that story, that specific story, came Bradshaw up. brought it up. He God. said, hey, Phil, remember that time you put that sack over my head? <laughs> And they laughed about that. First Blind. time first time Bradshaw was ever sacked. Right there. That's right. That's <laughs> first Phil sack. Robertson did it. That's right. Phil Robertson sacked him. Put yeah. a blindfold yeah. on True the True story. Man. Put a, put a uh, potato sack over potato his head. Potato sack over his head. Yeah. That's hey. amazing. No. Yeah, you can't let nobody know where to fish over. Look, here's what I say for Bradshaw. Good on him. Because back in them days, if Phil would have said, I'm going to put this sack over your head, uh-uh. I'm out. <laughs> no. Nope. Because he, I wouldn't, he I wouldn't was, have went. He was a little uh, on the unscrupulous oh, side. Oh, no, yeah. He was I, one of them. Uh, what I did mean, Kay say? Kay said he was a rascal. That's yeah. Rascal, he was one of them scrupulous. But back in them days. Rascals. Next thing you know, there's a cinder block tied to your foot. Yeah. And, you, know, <laughs> and you ain't the starter no more. Yeah. You know, that kind of deal. <laughs> <laughs> Good uh, grief. But I'm still not letting Phil put a bag over my head and just take me in the woods. No. Oh, you can now. No, I got a rule. I don't ever get in any kind of rig that he's driving. <laughs> no. You just don't do it. Him or his dog. <laughs> well, I missed that one. The morning that they had, 
Might have sunk both boats. What? The boat yeah. wreck? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're talking yeah. about the boat wreck? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I wasn't there that morning. With our friends from Yamaha Motors? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the yeah. motor people were there. Yeah. And they liked to drown everybody. Yeah. Oh, they did. Yeah. That's yeah. a good one. I hadn't heard that story. No, I told, uh, <laughs> I told those during boys. during the flood. Flood, well, too. Flood stage. The, yeah. the Yamaha big wig showed up down there, and, uh, and it, we had big backwater. I said, look, when y'all boys go hunting bar. Sorry about that. I said, you got about a 50% chance <laughs> of hey. surviving. Man, try to tell a story. You're well, hey, I'm sorry. I'm, fi- I'm fixing to sling this thing oh. <laughs> to that end as hard as I can throw it. <laughs> Whatever this is. Hey, well, look, let's tell that story when we get back from break. Yeah, let's let's tell break. Right, we're going to take a break. Don't go anywhere. So Johnny D, Stone, y'all got a bunch of people depending on your financial support, don't you? Mm-hmm. Got That's kids. why I quit got, this job. Got kids running, <laughs> got kids running around everywhere. I, hey, uh, truth hurts, boys. Yep. Whether it's a child, aging parents, or even a business partner, you need life insurance if you have people that depend on you financially. Policy Genius makes it easy to compare quotes from over a dozen top insurers all in one place. Why compare? You can save fifty percent or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. You could save $1,300 or more per year on life insurance by using Policy Genius to compare policy. The licensed experts at Policy Genius work for you, not the insurance company, so you can trust them to help you navigate every step of the shopping and buying process. That kind of service has earned Policy Genius thousands of five star reviews across Trustpilot and Google. And eligible applicants can get covered in as little as a week thanks to an award winning policy option that swaps a standard medical exam requirement for a simple phone call this exclusive policy was recently rated number one by forbes higher than options from ladder ethos and bestow getting started is easy first head to policygenius.com slash life in minutes you can work out how much life insurance coverage you need and compare personalized quotes to find your best price when you're ready to apply the policy genius team will handle the paperwork and scheduling for free policy genius never sells your information to other companies Policy Genius doesn't add on extra fee. Head on over to policygenius.com slash sidelife to get started now. Policy Genius. When it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. We're uh, back. All right, Stone, so, get back to so, your story so before, anyways, the, boat rack. before okay, Tweedledee yeah, and Tweedledee. Yeah, I'm trying not to interrupt you. you. All right. Are y'all done? It yeah. was him. <laughs> no, it was you. I was laughing at him. I'm not going to blame anything on him. It was you. <laughs> It was anyways. Me. Uh so these big wigs they show up down there and uh and the backwater, I was just kidding with them. I said, well, look, boys, it's just dangerous. It's twenty foot deep. You got about a you got a pretty good chance of not coming back. <laughs> and this was the day before the hunt, you know, they laughed, ha ha, whatever. So the next morning before daylight, we well, have you ever drove around in the backwater when the river's coming up, everything looks different day by day. That's the truth. It nothing looks the same. So you'll lose a road, a trail I don't care how many times you've been down it. When that water level changes, it's totally different. Yeah. So the, the they had it backwards. Phil was in the front with the outboard with about three men in it. Jace was in the behind them in a with a mud motor boat. Mm-hmm. It should have been the opposite. Yeah. Because that mud motor, you know, he don't he don't got no reverse, and and the only way to stop is to take the a, propeller out of the water or a tree or yeah, yeah. run or an something. immovable object or run yeah. it up on the bank. Yeah. Right. So what happened was before daylight, Phil got turned around. He slammed his boat in reverse, turned it sideways. Jace couldn't stop. And he T-boned Phil's boat with, the, with the Yamaha big wigs in there. And when Phil made a, an instinctive move and, hammered down on that throttle and come out underneath Jace's boat and wheeled out right beside him. <laughs> and everybody lived to tell the tale. So once again, do not get in a rig with Phil. Needless to say, we didn't get the Yamaha deal done. No. Well, he ain't seen them since. Yeah. We're not with Yamaha. Yeah. In other words, this, <laughs> Jason's boat was under on top of Phil? Yes. Uh-huh. Yep. Because uh, it's a flat bottom mud boat. That's so right. it just went right up. It went right up on it. 20 foot of water. 
Well, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm glad. You, I'm glad there was too many there that that morning. And I got left out. That's right. Your boy Evil Eye was there. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Old Philip still tells that story from Yamaha. Yeah, I talked to him this morning. <laughs> was good. The, the morning I they like still talk eye. to us, you know. Just yeah. yeah. Nah, yeah. we're good. Just, yeah. But no business wise, they don't. Yeah. They don't want to no come business. back. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't no business, boy. Nah. He did say uh, this morning. He said, "I think I'm about ready to come back." You know, I was like, <laughs> "You sure?" Yeah. Good luck. But I remember one morning it was just me and Jace. We passed his deer stand four times. <laughs> <laughs> in the dark he's like yeah i just i look back me, and now the deer stands on this side what, of me tell me no, i know no. what that is and it's what it's my deer stand yeah uh, well, yeah we did oh. we circled that deer stand four times problem is we're supposed to be on the other end of the property hunting yeah oh it's tough to navigate oh it's terrible because well, well, everything looks identical then like the duck hunting's terrible yeah it's that's awful. what was me i'm at the field boat and i said uh where are these giant cypress trees yeah, I said, good grief, that thing's you know, big rounds of pickup at the bottom. We ain't got nothing like that out here toward our, toward the duck hole. We was in that slough right behind the lodge. <laughs> we, we had done, got turned around two miles above where, you know. No. You're back at the lair. Oh, yeah, we're back at the lair. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, flood, well, waters, hey, flood waters ain't nothing to be trifled with. Well, now. especially if it's foggy. And okay, we still go duck hey. hunting like we're going to kill something. Yeah. We don't kill squat. <laughs> no, you ain't going to kill nothing to that. If you're lucky, you get to shoot a handful of jacks, and, you know, that's about it. Stone, what you snacking on? Oh, thing? I got, uh, uh-oh. So like finally, a- finally, uh-oh. somebody sent in some healthy Oh, snacks. a healthy snack. There it is. Well, what is it? And I, I must say, this is the best beef jerky I ever put in my mouth. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Huh. I it, ain't a beef jerky. Bourgeois. Man. Cajun beef jerky. Uh, anything that bourgeois. starts with bourgeois, I'm in on. Right. From Thibodeau, Louisiana. Thibodeau boys. Oh, right. I, I, I wish I knew Thib- some good beef Hey, you got Thibodeau, Thibodeau boys, hey. Yeah. Your boy, Terry Poole, sent that in. Yep. All right. I can appreciate that. Is it good? Oh, it's fine. I don't want none of it. I just want to right. He don't want Smell none of it. Hey, <laughs> right, go ahead. Go ahead and try it. <laughs> oh, a product hey. of Louisiana. Jay, Louis- he'll take some of it. A product of Louisiana. Just throw me one piece. It smells like Louisiana. Beef jerky is oh. the greatest thing that no, ever happened. Pretty- no, you better not give him none of I don't it. know how jerky ever caught on. Oh, it is. It's going to break no. his okay. It's gonna break his habit. I guess it's because it's easy, lunch, easy and you, you know, carry it in your pocket or put you it in the salad bag. You don't get how beef jerky ever caught on. Yeah. yeah. It's no. delicious. Hey, no, no, Josie terrible. Wales ate beef jerky. Thank you. Right, Josie Wells, they'd be jerky. Yeah, they eat what they live back in. Well, good for Josie Wells. Johnny D, we'd give Brian you a piece a beef of that. Jerky but, man. but you don't work here no more. So That's you're true. out. Well, let's take our next break. We'll be back right, right after. He had enough of moaning. If you don't have one, you need to get one. Get yourself a QB. Okay. You brought this one for me today. It's COPD friendly. Okay. <laughs> You can do it sitting in your recliner at home. I do it watching Daryl live at Daryl's house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for one hour. I want to come okay, over and work I out. Actually, with you. work out. I do ten minutes of pedaling. How quiet then the is this? Next five thing? minutes, I do five pound weights with six different exercises of thirty episodes. I mean, thirty episodes, thirty uh, repetitions each. Uh, okay, so I actually work out a full one hour, no downtime. So you're feeling better. So you, would you say you got more energy, more oh, yeah. endurance? Oh, yeah. My breathing is better. It helps that. Okay, because I've smoked too many once in cigarettes when I was in the military. Hey. Okay. If you smoke, throw that junk away. It's bad for you. Yeah, Trust right. me when I tell you. I got COPD from it. Well, that's awesome. So QB is a compact seated elliptical that lets you get fit while you sit. It's low impact, so it's easy on the joints. It's compact design. Fits almost anywhere. So you can stay active while you watch TV, like Cy, work, or spend time with family. QB can even help assist with rehab. Two out of three QB users say it's helped them get stronger and improve their mobility. Every QB elliptical comes with a 30-day risk-free trial. Visit QB.com slash duck or call today to get free shipping. Get the QB elliptical that is right for you. That's spelled C-U-B-I-I. Go to QB.com slash duck or call 1-800-210-4651. That's 1-800-210-4651. One more time, 1-800-210-4651. It will make you stronger and make you healthier. 
Well, Si, did you see the new decoration in the podcast room? Look behind my head. Oh, yeah. And what's what is what is that? That uh, the deer? Yeah, that that, deer that was our deer hunt for, uh, during the Veterans Week. Yeah, right. So right. I had a big. Uh, the picture turned out so good. I had a big. Uh, what do you call that? Canvas blown up. Ooh. And I asked Bullfrog. I said, "Where you want? Where you want me to put it?" You want to put it up in the house or in the call shop? She said, put it in the podcast room so I can, Uncle Si can see it all the time. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm and, and I thought, you know, <laughs> she won't do that so Uncle Si can remember that good memory. And she said, no, I want him to see it so he can remember that day I strapped him. <laughs> no, I knew, I knew what she wanted. What she wanted. So, hey, I wanted him to be reminded. Well, Si, we were going to put a picture of your deer up back there, but. Well, we saw that number. Yeah, yeah, y'all did put it up. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. There it goes, run it off. Yeah, there, there, <laughs> there she goes that there way. There it goes. Uh, yeah, that deer's fine. Uh, I've got yeah. pictures of that that doe he shot at. It. Every picture I got of it, she's doing this. <laughs> Just her eyes, looking her around. eyes are real big, and she's staring at that deer stand. <laughs> she's staring at that deer stand. I'm Where trying did to that find. Come from? Uh, huh? I'm trying to find the video again. What video? Of Si? Of Si missing hey, that video. They done seen it. Too, it makes right. me laugh every it day. It is. Hey, they didn't, hey no, no thought process there. <laughs> it was like, hey, he died because no there's no brain wave. So I, said, I said that to Dr. Deans. He got real tickled. <laughs> he said yeah. that made his day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He won't know if he was drinking any of that brown water while he was oh. up there. Is that what you was going to talk about? Huh? What you just had on there? Well, yeah, I just had it ready for. Well, hey, we'll talk about that. Whenever you want to talk about right. it, go ahead. Right. Fire away. Fire away. Right. Okay. Well, I I was looking in the news, and Stone actually texted me this one the other night. Oh yeah. So we need to talk about this on the podcast because it happened in Shreveport, Ooh. our Ooh. neighboring town huh. to the west. <laughs> Took a second. Uh, but the article is about concerned dads patrol high school. And fights suddenly end. Imagine that. People started going to class. <laughs> Did you see this story? Mm. So there were 23 kids so ar arrested at school. Southwood, Shreveport. Over three days. They were arrested at school? Yeah, for getting in fights. Yeah. There okay. were just fights, fights left and right. Okay. And so then uh, Michael Lafitte, that's a Louisiana name, uh, started a group called Dads on Duty, and 40 fathers signed up and took shifts uh, at the high school to maintain a peaceful environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The power of a, a dad. Well, That's right. Question. That's right. What yeah. was the fights about? Oh. Does anybody say anything about think? that? I don't know. I'm sure it was just kids being kids. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Twenty three. Yeah, that I mean that's that a ain't lot kids of fight. being yeah, kids. That ain't kids no. being kids. Well, yeah. it makes you. Well, I don't even want to go down that it's road. It's the but. circumstances of today's uh, society. Yeah. Okay. Well, even at West Monroe, it was hey, just go bear crawl till I get tired of watching you. We you, had to do lunch. If you got if you got caught doing something like that. Yeah. You're gonna bear crawl till I'm tired. Yeah, that was like you're yeah. like oh. Okay, man. that sounds like the time when I you know uh, big oaf said drop, give me twenty five. Yeah. Oh, big oaf. Okay, hey, I'll wipe that out. I'll wipe that smile off your face. Well, he did mm -hmm. three hundred later. There you go. Well, so it took yeah. forty dads <laughs> at the school. Yeah, to, to shut do, her down. To well, they're out. going okay. on shifts, so it's, well, there's hey, only a couple days. But one of the students said, you know, you have you ever heard of the look? Mm -hmm. So apparently there's just a couple dads, and when things get ratted, they just give them yeah. the old. That, I, I that saw, when you used to get in church. Show Martin a picture of the of dads. I saw a picture of them, and a couple of them are pretty intimidating guys. Intimidating guys. Big, well, strong oh, okay. men. Even at that age. Yeah, I mean, but even if they that, give me the look, oh, yeah. if this group okay. of dads tells oh, yeah. me to stop okay. doing something, yeah. I'm done. Yeah, That's it. That's awesome. That is awesome. That that yeah. was one of the That's what I would best just articles hey, I've seen in great. a while. Great for the, the dad. Well, odds are what they're doing by being at school 
is because the dads at home wasn't doing what they're supposed to be doing. That's right. So the those, article does. Those, well, that's those true. dads showed up there. And, that's true. Yeah. And showed that yeah. they cared, and you know, I mean, that's a that's a good deal. That's awesome. And and also, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but they're trying to start chapters yeah, statewide and nationwide. And I I think I would get good. Obviously, it's a good thing. Yeah. I would be so nervous if Stone showed up to my school and gave me the look. Like that one right there. <laughs> well, no, Is no. Is he sitting there doing his yeah. grip workout? <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Uh, uh, I would behave, uh, though, uh, and that is true. And th- that's what they said. Uh, they told CBS, <laughs> uh, not everybody has a father figure at home mm. or a male, period, in their life. Yep. So just to be here makes a big difference, which I do think. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, that's that's awesome. They're taking the time to invest in kids' lives that aren't their own. So that's a that's a cool thing. Yeah, those. Yeah, and there were some of them. Yeah, you know, I that you could tell the look in their eyes. You didn't want to mess with them. I'm afraid of. I, I was like that old Clint Eastwood eyes. How'd you know which one gonna shoot first? Yeah. Well, he yeah. had crazy eyes. Crazy eyes. <laughs> you look, you look a man in the eyes. He'll tell you enough about him right there. That's you, it. <laughs> you know which dad you make and cross, and which right. one you right. can't. But right. if he says, "I don't want no trouble," and he's smiling at the same time, stay away. <laughs> you about to get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody about to cloud up and rain on it. But that's good. I'm. It's good that they took ownership of it and didn't yeah. expect somebody else to fix the problem. I can appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, that, that so, did my heart some good to see that article, you know. So, Dad's on duty. We salute you. Oh, for sure. Sure do. We need more uh, of that. Absolutely. Yep. Which, and, yep. it, and it is sad that people don't have, you know, the male figures in their life. Yeah. But, and, and that and, is the devil's doing, boys. Yeah, because it shows how important that is to have that. Like, he's, like the one, he's the one that attacked the family structure. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the family structure is under attack. Oh, yeah. Don't ever doubt that. Yep. It gets yep. worse every year. Yep. Well, and another case of good news, you, y'all you have seen the movie Radio, right? I haven't. You haven't seen Radio? No, I haven't seen it. I have. It's a fantastic movie. It tells a story about a, a guy working at a high school, does it for free, and finally the real life radio on October the 29th is getting the field house named after him at that school in Demopolis, Alabama. Oh, okay. So they are rewarding. You know, the movie is radio. They all call him canned good back home. Don't don't really know why, but that man has, has volunteered at that school, washing clothes, doing all that kind of stuff for 50 years. 50 years, volunteer, no pay. No pay. He's seen eight coaches, 386 victories, 78 playoff appearances. Whoa. 22 region titles and two state championships. And he is now the field house is being named after him. His name's Albert Thomas. Albert, good on you, son. Excellent Ooh. job. Dem- sir. The town of Demopolis, yeah. good on you for yeah. taking care of one of your yeah. own. Look at him. There we go. That's yeah. awesome. Hey, there's a few pictures. He's 67 years old and he's still doing it. Wow. Still, oh, there's a Black Panther, sir. Hey. It's a tiger. Hey. <laughs> Kudos, coach. <laughs> hey. Oh, man. Can you imagine volunteering for he's, five decades? He's And he's missed one game. One game. Uh, one. Yeah. 50 years. So, Albert. I can't even imagine being alive that long. <laughs> look, Albert, our man, we salute you uh, on that, too, man. Good on you. And, so, and so does the Almighty because, hey, you, you've done what he said. I got a servant's you heart. You love the you? Almighty, and then you turned around and loved your fellow man. That's awesome. Okay. That, it, it's good to read that kind of stuff yeah, going on in the world because so many times those articles don't ever make it nope. to make it to the top. No, it's, it's all something about blood. some guy named Brandon, and you know, I don't, you know, all that kind of stuff <laughs> going on. Yeah, but, gas prices, gas prices, and the weather. Hey, now well, I'm glad. Look, speaking of weather, we're getting huh. rain finally. Praise God for that. That's all I'm going to say. <clears throat> right. I'm going to have to start bringing my wife's Honda hunting. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> or just staying down there. Good grief. We've yeah. been on gas prices for a minute. Ooh, it's, it's, I didn't even. I quit the other day uh, filling up. I just stopped. I was like, I can't do this anymore. It's making me sad. Oh, you don't went on that gimber bag? Mm-hmm, just... I'm going to have to stop again before I run out yeah, of gas. Put $10 was... in like yuck, you did in high school? No, yeah. I got the 50 this time, and I was like, I got to give up. This is We're not even close. I have to get gas on my way home now because of that. <laughs> <laughs> but I was sad. It was too expensive. It was uh, sad. And people are wondering, I wonder why gas prices are going up. Like, if you wasn't running down why. so low. 
You yeah. wouldn't have to. They wouldn't take so much to fill it up. Stop and fill up when you got three quarters of a tank. Right. Feels better. Yeah, they, they <laughs> feel better. They don't feel as That's bad. Right. It's right. like whenever you're driving yeah. to the duck hole. If you go really fast when it's cold, when you stop, it feels warm. Yeah. If you go as fast as you can stand it, when you stop, it feels. It's warm. all about per- right. perception. Yeah. It's about your perspective of it, the that's, boys. That's. That's deep. Yeah, that's that kind weird. of thinking only comes out from under a coonskin so, cap. That's right. <laughs> well, <man. laughs> I told you, make America great again. Uh, it's a that's an expensive coonskin uh, hat. Let's, let's yeah. reopen that pipeline, boy. Uh, <laughs> 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 All right. Well, let's take Good a break. We'll night. be back right after this. Sai, would you wear sweatpants on a first date? Sweatpants? No. I would. Hey, well, good. You know why? Because buying a cheap gun magnet would be just like wearing sweatpants on a gun on a first date. You don't want a cheap gun magnet. You want one that'll hold your stuff where it's supposed to be. Watch this. Look at it. Look at it. This thing's heavy. And I'm not afraid at all of getting a concussion holding it over my head. Look, we love chasing the American dream and the American entrepreneur. And a couple of our Duck Call Room listeners named John and Lori set out to make the best gun magnets money can buy. And boy, did they ever. These babies right here, the soft hold gun magnets. They started making these by hand in their garage. And John ended up getting a magnet with a perfect size and strength built to his custom specs. They wrapped that neodymium magnet in top grain leather to keep it from scratching your gun. And voila, soft hold gun magnets were born and perfect holding power and perfect good looks. Where can you put them? Anywhere. You can put them anywhere you mount anything. Your truck, your tractor, your car, your bed, your duck blind, a safe, under your desk if you need something. Look. I got one right here. They'll they'll go wherever you can put them. Every soft hold gun magnet is handcrafted in America with this verse from First Seth. First Thessalonians on the back. Test all things. Hold fast what is good. The 50-pound pull magnet is designed to keep your full-size, fully loaded gun secure on even the roughest roads in America, which means they will survive I-20. <clears throat> These look good anywhere you mount them, even when your gun isn't attached. Get an American Patriot magnet, armed and beautiful. Come and take it or ask about any custom logo you want. You spend $500 to $1,000 on the perfect gun. Why would you want to put a cheap magnet that will scratch your new investment Buy the best. Buy American. You can't always carry your gun on your hip, so when you need it close, use the soft hold gun magnet to keep it secure. Give yourself or someone you love the one gun accessory you'll use forever, a soft hold gun magnet. Use the promo code DUCK at checkout to get a 10% discount off your entire order at softhold.com. That's S-O-F-H-O-L-D.com. There's no T in there. S-O-F hold.com. Promo code DUCK for 10% off your order. You know what chaps my rear end about more than anything. You know what makes me so angry. I just no, who said tell us what Earl Earl Remember Earl Native American redneck. What really grinds your gears there, Stone? When I'm driving down the road, mm-hmm. and all I can see in the ditches is trash. Mm. Trash is what kind, litter is your problem. What kind of human will throw trash out the window? Is beyond me and then do it on purpose yeah, yeah. Now i can understand yep. if you got something in the back of your truck and it flies out okay everybody's everybody's given a time to forget about something in the back of your truck you forget that right the empty box is there or whatever you built you know you built your child's swing set and there's an empty box i, I give you i give you a free pass you forgot on your way to work it was there but like drink cups and crap like that beer cans yeah. Why Any is it kind always of can? beer cans in the oh, woods? Mattress. Because we're in North Louisiana. The, like just, you never see yeah. a Coke can in yeah. the middle of the woods. Oh, well, no, they ain't spending their money on that. Yeah, yeah. What you get from a mattress, mattress. or you a drive and there's a couch in the Look, ditch. I tell you, the worst place yeah. in the world is boat ramps. Oh, yeah. No, People yeah. think that the good thing to no, do no. is to dump all your trash out at the boat ramp for whatever unknown reason. Every time I go... I pick up a dang Walmart sack full of trash at the boat ramp every time, whether it's night crawler boxes, some kind of discount light domestic beer can. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's never even the expensive beer, right? Some some weird colored water bottle that I'm not sure what that is in it. Like you know, I pick it up with a bag. Yeah, I hope you have like the grabbers. No, but I I I do fish in line for crying out loud. Like I mean, just pick your stuff up, people. And this time of year, deer corn. 
Yeah, deer corn. Everywhere you go, uh, not to be confused with squirrel corn or turkey corn. <laughs> it's all deer corn for yeah. some reason. I, they're the only things that'll eat it, I guess. I'll eat it. But I mean, it's just rice bran bags. Just, just take care of your stuff. Pick your thing. I mean, how for lazy crying. and pathetic does a person have to be to do something like to that? Throw something out the window? Just throw trash out the window I... into creation. And they won't dare shoot the target on the back of the deer corn bag yeah, but it. they'll shoot every street sign between there and the hunting well, camp to make target. sure that it's sighted in that's a million dollar plus <laughs> every year for the state of louisiana street Re- signs doing street signs over uh-huh yeah <laughs> okay they missed rednecks no well, what happens that's is they, where hey that's where your taxes are going what happens is they shot like well, you on camera portion. and then they got to check it to make sure they can still hit a four by four square because you know that's how big a deer's vitals are no <laughs> It's like what, what is it about a sign that make that makes a redneck want to shoot it? I don't know. It's I've never shot. But a there sign. is not a sign. Once you get out of the city limits, there is. You, I I charge you to find one sign <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't have a bullet hole in it. That's right. Within yeah. five square miles of Phil's house, <laughs> that does not have oh, a bullet I, hole. Oh, within right. no. Phil's house. No, I way. charge you to find one that has a bullet hole in it. Yeah, just one. Yeah, because yeah, most of them got yeah, multiple 11 yeah, yeah. multiple <laughs> yeah. i mean it's like what well, and then oh, the people that yeah. pattern their That's shotguns the on part. yeah they're shooting street signs oh i know it okay hey i might be driving down that road <laughs> and i guess what if a bullet whizzes by me i'm sending one back that's it you get a return yeah you get a this is a return to sender jack uh <laughs> <laughs> uh, look on the last one we we talked about johnny d leaving we didn't get uh, in let's our, get off that but we didn't get in our inbox so we got a few sitting in the inbox johnny i got d, extras what we have in the hello at duckcallroom.com yeah let's stop talking about me so our first email the subject line is johnny d the hero i did not know i needed so we're gonna read that one oh, obviously yeah. well, hey, well, of yeah. course we'll shocker suffer. We'll, shocker. Suffer. <laughs> we'll suffer through it johnny no. read it you can be self <laughs> that's fine that is the subject line the actual thing is about stone this man's a 30 year old bleh, bleh, a 38 year old army vet hmm. and he spent nine years in law enforcement hmm. alan we appreciate you yep. for both of those jobs yes, amen right. but um he's been working at a desk and he was about my size and stone getting on top of me and making me uh work out so much has inspired him and now he has joined his own house of pain in south carolina so he's Uh, look he he sent this email on his way to his first boxing workout sir i hope you made it i remember my first boxing workout when stone (laughs) almost murdered me but i thought that was a cool email and uh you know changing lives i like when people are fired up and doing what we're doing changing lives that's awesome happy so i mean he will not regret it stick with it man stick with it i want to go punch something right now all right moving on jimmy from tennessee has a couple questions about the bible do you know but, anything about the Bible, side? Well, I, just a little bit. All right, let's go. He'll have so, to check it out. He used to attend church, but uh, when he was a kid, grew older, stopped going. Uh, and now he's about 25 years old. He's always believed in God. But uh, he wants to, he's about to get married. He's engaged. So he's about to get married. He's, you know, kind of deciding it's time to step up uh, and lead his family. Uh, But he says, I feel the Bible is so vast with knowledge and it seems overwhelming to me at times. I was wondering, what is a good starting point? Mm. I got one for you, okay, because I'm I'm in the process right now of getting some lessons together for a gospel meeting I got coming up. Ephesians 6.12, okay, and it goes something like this. Our struggles is not against flesh and blood, okay? But the powers, the rulers, and the authorities, and something about evil, I can't remember exactly about it, okay? Against the powers of the dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Yeah, in the heavenly realms. So, okay, that's one, That's where you start, okay? Take an inventory of what's going on in your life, and what you got, what's up, what you're up against, 
Okay? And the first one is, hey, you're up against evil forces, power, okay, in the heavenly realms, okay? It's not against flesh and blood. So we're, we're fighting some powerful stuff here. So guess what? You better have your own, your power or someone else's power to fight this with. And the power I'm talking about is Jesus, okay? He's the ultimate power. Him, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. But my, my advice was don't, don't let, because the Bible's got 66 books, okay? And that is, that's a lot of, uh, a lot of territory to cover. So my deal is, hey, just pick one of the New Testament books, okay? One of them would probably be good. Find out who Jesus is. That'd be yeah. Matthew. Yeah. yeah. A, lot of good, a lot of good parables. That's Matthew. where I always tell people yeah. to start that are yeah. confused. Just start in the New Testament. Yeah. Start, start at Matthew, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Yep. Work your way through that. And then, because if you're not familiar with that really and truly, the first part's not going to make a whole lot of sense to you because the first, the Old Testament is all kind of pointing towards Jesus is coming. Yep, mm-hmm. in history. You know, yep. and then you got the Gospels while Jesus is here, and yep. then you got the rest, which is Jesus is coming back. So That's it's right. like you need to know the man Jesus before you can tie the whole thing in. Yep. And if you don't, if you don't start there, to me, you can get, you can go back down that road of them names with 27 consonants, and you're going to get lost in them genealogy trees yep. back there. That's it. You, I well, mean, you start. Going, you don't, side, yeah. So you start with the gospel, then you end yeah. with the gospel. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, that's the thing. That's the key, okay? You never get off the gospel. But like he was talking about, Martin, okay, Genesis to Malachi, Jesus is coming, okay? He's being foretold. He's on his way. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus is coming here yeah. on this earth then the rest of it is okay hey he's done what he was supposed to do he's coming back to get us yeah amen he's going okay. to that's the that's one of my favorite uh-huh. thing galvin says and all yeah. his whenever he's talking about yeah. that he says now he said he was going to prepare a place for yeah. us he said he spoke this world into existence he said, but now he's preparing a place. He says, so imagine how cool that's going to be that he's he's preparing and us And he a spoke place. that well, one in seven days. He's been gone for about 2,000 well, no, no. years. Yeah. Here's the thing that gets me about that, okay, and here's this is just my opinion, okay? When he created all of this, okay, guess what? It says that in, in my father's house are many rooms. I've go to prepare you a place for it. Okay, hey, it's already, when he created it, the heavens and the earth. Yeah. Well, guess what? Hey, his house was created. His room, my room is reserved. <laughs> okay. All I got to do is keep my faith and my eyes on him. Yeah. And one day I, I will get to go in my room. Hey, Amen. Okay? Well, let's take our last break. We'll be back. Get back in that mailbag. Right we got after some this. more good ones. All right, let's get back in that yeah. mailbag, uh, Johnny D. Uh, what uh, else you got, Johnny? I got, hey, we have sent a lot of people to Bucky's, by the way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> people and, keep going. And for all of y'all, Look, you're welcome. Sent that pastrami sandwich in. Uh, he s- specifically wanted me to tell you, Martin, uh, that is the pastrami Reuben. That's Ryan from. Mm. He's a Cajun. Yeah. Laruville. Okay. Lauraville. Lauraville. Yeah. Lauraville. That Lauraville. is not how you spell Laura. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but he said, get off that brisket bag and get on that Reuben bag. Now, no, look, now see, Brian, here, here's where me and you got a fundamental disagreement. Uh-oh, Brian. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan. Ryan. Sorry. Ryan. 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 I don't do sauerkraut. But this is <laughs> At all. Oh, you don't like it? I would eat that sandwich. Ooh. No, I don't like sour kraut. I don't like sour patch kids. If it's got sour in it, I don't like whiskey sours. If it's got sour in it, I'm out. Yeah, your boy. Yeah. I like sour. I'm with you. Your boy's out. So yeah. there you go. Sorry, Brian. All right. But hey, anyway, we're all entitled to opinion. God bless America. And then Jeremy <laughs> from Lake Alfred, Florida, sent this email in with the subject line: "Very upset at Sai!" Exclamation point. Oh, about oh. eight of them. 
Oh. How could you be upset at Cy? What are you upset with me for? He must have been duck hunting with you. I'm very <laughs> upset to hear that Cy likes steaks medium plus. Oh, yeah. Oh. But that is not a real temperature. I'm a chef, and when I hear that, I just shake my head. I beg your pardon, Mr. Chef. <laughs> that is a temperature. Okay? It's a little past medium. Okay? Medium is blood bleeding from the meat. No, nope. I want mine a little less than <laughs> a little more cooked than that. Okay, he literally so said light pink. When we hear that, it's like people saying, "I would like medium rare, but no blood, please." Well, no, no, that's why I said medium plus. Because hey, if you say well done, you're gonna get a piece of boot leather. <laughs> he does agree. Uh, with I've you done there. tried this for what seventy three years. Okay, <laughs> medium plus works. They actually bring it to me where the middle of the steak, where regardless of what what thickness it is, it's light pink in the middle. He's been eating steak for seventy three years, and he still That's don't right. know how to eat. Still don't know how to eat. Hey, come out of the womb yeah. eating steak, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so those are some fun ones, and then I got a kind of a serious one uh, from Matt out of Sioux City, Iowa. Oh, the heartland. Yeah. Oh, the heart. Uh, <laughs> he, he, this is a heavy question, kind of. Would you mind posing this to the group of experts? They're not here, so we'll have to do. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to do. He's Where a father at? of three adult kids. Uh, 23, one passed away, uh, hmm. but he would have been 25. Sorry about that. And then 28. Um, They've uh, been to ch church uh, their whole lives. They raised their family in church. Um. Their kids, however, have kind of lost that mentality, I guess is the right word. Um, it's been difficult for them after losing a brother. Mm. And then, um, you know, all of 2020 happened and some churches were closed and an online church. So he's, you know, he's trying to get his kids back in church. So he asked this question. Is it fair uh to cancel gift exchange this year at Christmas instead of celebrating Christmas with the kids that aren't following Jesus. It is, is it being hypercritic to celebrate Christmas with non-believers or people that aren't on the road to salvation? I love them, uh, but I still want to lead a Christian household. Well, let me say this. What, if you've planted the seed mm -hmm. one day, that seed will sprout. It might take one year, five years, 10, 20 years. Who knows? Yeah. But if you planted the seed, you did your job. Amen. And don't, don't ever stop celebrating Christmas under no circumstances. With your kids. Amen. With your kids. So that's, that's, almost, that's what I got. It almost is, to me, sounds like they are forgetting a parable of the 99 and the 1. Yeah. They're willing to leave the one or the two because they're not part of the 99. The one or the two are the ones you should be concerned about and spending the most time with. Yeah. That, and show them the love of Jesus. That's kind of my point. Through problem. whether it's gift exchange, it's food, it's meals, it's prayers, it's just time together. Like, I, I think, I and look, I ain't trying to be mean. I think you're dead wrong on whatever your premise you've proposed here is. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I couldn't personally disagree with it more yes yeah. yeah. so my advice was going to be you should do the exact opposite of what you're thinking because you're not you're not going to see these people at church your kids you're not going to see them there you said so why not have the best christmas you've ever yeah, had ratchet it up a notch and yeah. and they'll be there for that and they'll see because honestly i think a lot of people who don't get what we're all about as christians don't get it because they don't have a loving father. So if you show them a loving earthly father, no matter the circumstance, mm -hmm. no matter what they're doing, because it's already in the Bible, no matter, we can't screw this up enough <laughs> for God to say, nope, canceling yeah. my gift to you, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. He already gave it to us. No matter what we do, we can't, yeah. we can't escape that yeah, The gift. price has been paid. Yeah. So yeah. I well. would say... Your job as a father, and I've got super young kids, uh, so I'm not an expert, but I would say your job is to show them the love of the father, mm -hmm. no matter the circumstance, 
And right. if they're doing wrong, you tell them they're doing wrong, but you still have to show them that love. Well, yeah. Jesus said this to his uh, to his audiences when he walked this earth. Okay, you will know my disciples by their love for one another. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so the only thing if your children you think have gone astray. You've got what to. You've got to do what Jesus does for us every day. Come back and get them. Come back and get them. Come back and get them. Son. Okay. Because hey, you know, the, the God only gave mankind, in my humble opinion, two major commands. One of them is love Him with everything you've got. Okay, and then the other one is turn around and then love those around you. Amen. Okay. Because if we would just do them two, this would be a much better place. The rest, for us, the rest of them take about. care of themselves. Yeah, that, don't they? Everything else will kind of fall in line mm. with mm. that. Okay. So, so anytime you see a person in trouble, okay, and you don't stop and help him, okay, you're wrong. That's right. Okay, and hey, look, we've, we're all guilty of it at one time or another. Okay, yeah. but, you know, you need to put that in you in the back of your mind. Anytime you can help another human being that needs help, you should do it. You know, yeah. I'm guilty of it myself. Sometimes we get too busy. Yeah. Sometimes we, you know, other things take priority. And not, know. not to mention the, the fact uh, that uh, kids, teenagers, young adults, in these days, having to grow up with all this social media, all this peer pressure, the vulgarities, and just, just trash, well, all over the internet. Like I cannot imagine being a teenager having to deal with all of that. And, and and come up living a Christ like yeah no no being a Christ like yeah. example. I mean it's yeah. it's 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 super super hard for teenagers and, and young people. It's way different than to, whenever I was in oh, a teenager, and yeah. I was a teenager ten years ago. Yeah. So if you planted that seed, that seed will sprout one day. Don't That's ever biblical. It. Yeah, it says yeah. it right there. Train a child in the way. He should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. He might get away for a second, yeah. but he'll always come back. That's right. Yep. All right. Well, those those were good. Ema, do we have time for another? Yeah. Or no I don't know. I'm a, you're in charge of this, Mark. Yeah, run one more. Let's see what else we got. All Why right, not? let's see. I ain't ready to quit. This is fun. No. Yeah. Hey. We don't. We don't. This is not only fun. This is important. Yeah. The country needs you. Do you want another heavy one? Sure. Go send, for it. Send us out on one. Send us out on a heavy one. Uh, this one literally says, I don't want to bring the mood down. So, um. You ain't going to bring our mood down. Greg from Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, he does what our good friend McMillan does. Uh, he takes great pride in that. Um. He takes leftovers on a plane? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> for a living. <laughs> uh, he works, uh, with okay. youth residential services. Uh, but. He ha he really wants to ask Martin specifically, All right. and anyone else who has lost their dad. Advice. It's a dad episode. He lost his dad just over three years ago, and I was wanting to know how you kept the faith. While there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that my dad is up there fishing with Jesus, and I know he is no longer in any pain, I still find myself angry sometimes. After a few minutes, I come back down. I know it's wrong, and I know it's something that I want that I want to happen, but. It does, and I need it to stop. Yeah. So getting upset. Yeah, I mean, I don't through this whole deal. I don't think I've ever been angry. Uh, I mean, I guess you come to the realization, especially as a believer, we're all gonna die. Like that's that's an inevitable part of life. Maybe I would have been angry had I not felt like my dad did exactly what he wanted to while he was on this earth, but he did. I mean, he went out with his dang boots on, like, you know, working in the yard, essentially, the up until he couldn't. Like, I mean, he, he did those things, but I've never, I mean, I've been sad because, like, he ain't there, but angry, I, that's not one, but I don't have really big anger issues anyway, so... 
I don't know exactly how to tell you to, to deal with anger other than it seems like you got a little bit of a trust issue here, but, but your dad was always going to pass you, you yourself. What it made me actually do was look at my own mortality, like, and say, if this happened to me tomorrow, would I be happy with what I've done to this point? Like, and so that challenges me to live a better life, to do more things for other people, just like we talked about earlier. So I don't, I mean, I, I, I guess the anger probably comes from that place or perhaps some selfishness that we all deal with. But, but, um, man, just trust. And, and the, and the cool thing is if you do believe that, that he's up there, then you should strive to get to be back together one day. Yeah. Like anger should be the last thing in your yep. heart. Like the hope of getting back together and that great reunion should take precedent over anything else, which I'm, I'm looking forward to. I mean, you know, I, that's, that's at the end of the day, that's all you got. Well, uh, I, I, I'll, let me throw in my deal. Okay. <clears throat> I've lost, uh, my mom, my dad, me and Phil are the last two. Okay, mom and dad had seven kids. Me and Phil the last ones, okay? You need to figure out, okay, you said you was angry about something. You need to figure out what you're angry about, okay? Because if you're blaming God for taking him or letting him go, okay, that's an entirely different issue. I loved what you said, though. I You said I know where he's at and he's at peace, okay? That's why it doesn't bother me. <clears throat> Look, death <clears throat> to me <clears throat> is nothing but a change of address. Okay? I'm here on this earth right now. When I die, you know, I I wish I could put something like, hey, don't don't stand here at this, this stone sitting in this dirt. I'm not here. Amen. Okay. I'm in heaven and guess where I guess where I what I'm surrounded by. The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, brotherly love. Everything is good, and I've got goosebumps all over me. Right <laughs> Everything up there is grand, okay? We have no idea how great it's going to be. But, hey, your father, if you said, okay, he's up there, man, hey, that's the greatest thing. Like Martin said, hey, your goal should be, hey, I'm going to get up there and I'm going to be with him. Mm-hmm. Okay, you talking about a reunion? Oh yeah. Okay, you know, look, all the angels in heaven bust out in song when somebody comes home. Okay, yeah. they throw a party. Okay, and I can't wait to be up there when all of us get back together. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, I, I got, I got a question. That. What do you want us to put on your headstone? Huh? Here lies Uncle Si. He ain't no. here no more. He ain't here, boys. <laughs> well, no, no, because look. <laughs> I'm putting that hat there. No, no. Here's the greatest <laughs> thing. If you ever go to Virginia, Plymouth Rock up there, okay? Go through the 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 graveyards, okay? And I loved it when I walked through there and read what was on all of them. Don't, don't cry for me. All I'm doing, I'm waiting for the resurrection. Mm -hmm. That's what was on a 500 of them headstones. Okay. We may get side taxidermied anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Maybe we can keep it. You want, want a European man? Or <laughs> no, 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 that y'all getting a little too weird. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put on your headstone. Here lies Si. He never flared a duck. Uh, yeah, I'm, just, hey, I, I'm, no, I'm just going to put it. He's no, no, invisible, hey. boys. No, no. Hey. I love it. And I, I'll, no. I'll end it with this, and then I got a verse for us. Uh, you know, all those people that have gone before us, I've got a few up there. Uh, they wouldn't come back and hang out with me if they could. Uh, absolutely. They're not. having a way better time. They're trying to pull on that string to get us up there quicker. Yeah, I yeah. guarantee yep. you. They're like, yep. hey, you ready? Yep. It's time. Come on. Go. Get them up here. Go. I'm ready to yep. see them, but I, yep. I ain't going down to yep. that earth anymore. Yep. Forget that. So here's our Bible verse for the day from Grace, 18 years old in Oconto, Wisconsin. She would love it if we could end one of our podcasts with her favorite Bible verse. Guess what, Grace? Well, You're yeah. going to love this. Proverbs yeah. 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. straight. Yeah.
Yep. Mm -hmm. Amen. We'll That's see y'all next time. Right here. This is not unashamed. Don't let today fool you. Hey, so. not unashamed, <laughs> but boys, we kind of brought it. Uh.